In this video, I will show you how to use the caustic baking add-on to create realistic and accurate caustics in Blender. Let's start by covering the basic functionality of the add-on. Two main areas are used to interact with the add-on. The first one is located in the end panel in the 3D viewport. This is used to mark relevant objects for the add-on to process. I will start with the light source. The options on the top of the panel will depend on the type of object you have selected. With the light source selected, we get the option to select it as a caustic source. When we click the button, it will be added to the list of caustic sources below. This list is a quick way to access all marked objects in the scene. Let's continue by selecting one of the mesh objects. There are three options for mesh objects. Contributors are objects that create the caustics like the glass monkey in this scene. Receivers are the objects on which you wish to bake the caustics. Shadow casters are objects that only block the light, but don't need to interact in any other way. After marking an object as a receiver, you can choose which UV map will be used for the baking process. I recommend that you only mark relevant objects for the caustics, as it will improve baking times. Also make sure that every marked mesh object has a material, because the add-on will manipulate the material temporarily during the baking process. With at least one source, contributor, and receiver marked, I can go to the baking settings. They are located within the render tab in the properties menu. The first two options are your main control for the quality of the bake. The add-on will make a render of the scene with a standard resolution of 1K. From this render, it will extract the information to build the caustic texture. You control the resolution via the first option, which is multiplied by the standard 1K resolution. You will have to experiment with what the optimal values are depending on your hardware and the complexity of your scene. With the second option, you can increase the number of renders that will be made. More samples and higher resolution will reduce the amount of noise in the resulting bake. Another way to reduce the noise is to enable the denoise option. In my experience, the results are surprisingly good even with very low sampling settings. The colored option is only needed when you have a contributor that influences the color and not for colored light. It will double your baking time, so only use it when needed. The bake energy setting is used to bake the strength of your light into the texture. Leaving it turned off can make it easier to adjust the brightness of the light at a later point. When using more than one light, it will be turned on automatically to ensure the correct ratio between both lights. Now to the export settings. You can either choose an existing image or let the add-on create a new one with your specified resolution. This option will overwrite an existing image with the same name. If you wish, you can also have the image saved automatically in a directory of your choosing. Unsaved images will be lost when closing Blender. Pressing the Run button will start the baking process. You can see some of the temporary changes the add-on is making to your scene. This is not sped up to show you how fast the add-on can be. I will have my hardware specs in the description for reference. When the baking process is finished, all of the temporary changes will be undone. Here's the resulting image with and without the denoising. Now, the only thing missing is to add the texture to the material of the plane. For that, you will need two color mix nodes set to multiply. The first one needs to be set to the color of the light, and the second one needs to be connected to the base color of the principled BSDF. Then, connect it with the emission color of the principled shader. Set the emission strength to the brightness of the light, which is 100 in this case. Now, we can have a look at the final result. This is the most basic setup, but it doesn't take into account the materials of the objects. So let's have a look at how you can do that. In this scene, we have colored glass, a diamond with a dispersion shader, a golden ring, a car, and a wooden floor that uses a normal map. All of these will require some setup in their materials. I have already done everything but the material setup, so let's jump straight into that. Starting with the floor, you can see it has a basic principled shader setup with a color, roughness, and normal map. Also, 
I have already set up everything for the caustic texture later. As this is a receiver object, the only thing important for us right now is the normal map. For the add-on to use it, it has to be plugged into the corresponding input on the CB main caustic node. If the node group is not yet available, go to the end panel and click the Import Shader Node button. When using the node on a receiver, the only input with an effect is the normal, so let's move on to one of the contributors. The monkey is made of colored glass. For that, you only have to match the settings of the caustics node with those of the glass shader and plug in the volume absorption shader to the volume input. The other transparent object is a diamond with a dispersion shader. Just connect the dispersion node to the caustics node. I made this dispersion node specifically to work with this add-on, but you should be able to use any other dispersion setup that doesn't need multiple glass shaders. Now, to the non-transparent objects. For these, you just have to set the transmission to zero. Now, it will behave like a metal reflective surface. For the gold ring, you just have to match the color. The car is slightly more complicated. Only the clear coat creates caustics because the main material is dark and diffuse. Unlike the ring, the amount of light that is reflected depends on the angle at which the light hits the surface. For that, you need the Fresnel node. Plug the factor output of the Fresnel node into the color input of the caustics node. This gives realistic results for smooth, non-metallic surfaces or diffuse surfaces with clear coats. I'm going to speed through the baking process. A few things of note. If you have multiple contributor objects in your scene, the add-on will try to split them into separate samples. It will distribute samples optimally between all objects, so the number of samples will deviate from the number you specified. The other thing to be aware of is that the resulting image might appear completely black-like in this case. This is because the values are too low to be displayed on your monitor. When multiplied with the brightness of the lamp, it should look correct. When baking the brightness of the light, you probably will encounter the opposite problem where areas seem to be completely white. This is only a limitation of your display. Now, let's have a look at the result. As you can see, everything looks correct. The blend file of this tutorial will be included with the add-on. If you have any questions, feel free to comment below. I hope this was helpful and have fun using the add-on.